Hey friends, <laughs> so I, here I am. This is embarrassing as all get out, but uh, the embarrassment is, all, is long past, so now it's just time to fix it. Did this huge, well, 30, 40 by 60 painting on plein air a couple weeks ago now, out in front of an elementary school in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina, and uh, got it home and began looking at it going, Hmm, I'm not sure all those lines are right. <laughs> the more I looked at it, I took it to my painters group and got a great big confirmation from them. No, those lines are most certainly not correct. So here I am. Um, <laughs> it's, at, it's at moments like this that I wish that I painted in a traditional oil painting manner because traditional oil painting is basically consists of layers and layers of opaque you know straight out of the tube color but when you paint the way I do which is layers and layers of transparent color fixing things just isn't quite that easy can be done so anyway I had actually, before I brought you in, I had to actually have a long yardstick that I that I used to draw a whole bunch of lines, uh, hopefully, I think, in correct perspective. Uh, and this is one time where I actually am using these crazy pencils for similitude, for drawing. And I, I, I talk so often about most of the time when I'm using these pencils, it's for purposes of texture and so on. Well, not today, folks. <laughs> today, this is all about drawing. Doggone it. I, I I still marvel. I think the problem here was that I, I, the day that I painted this, I stayed too close to the canvas for too long. I didn't, I had an audience most of the day. I mean, kids came by in groups of 20 or 50, and, and I just didn't have time to, to back up and look at it. At least that's my excuse. Will you let me stick with that? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't stand back and look at it nearly enough. So ended up with this debacle of erroneous perspective. Which so which debacle I am trying to correct right now using rulers and pencils. So I was going to say one of the nice things about the the pencil is that you can erase. So to speak, you can rub out the 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 parts, the pencil marks that you don't need, with a little bit of terpenoid or gamsol or whatever it is to clean your brush that you use to clean your brushes. And so I'm doing that right now, going back and just erasing the pencil where I don't need it anymore. So let's talk about how to make corrections. So I've got basically I've got all the corrected lines in place, I think, and um, I have to make corrections then in a two-step process. Sometimes I can cheat and get it done in one step and make it look like it wasn't done in one step, but basically it consists in I have to do two things. Number one, I have to lay down, again, because I can't just plaster a correction on top, right on top of the painting. It'll look, it'll stick out like a band-aid. You with me? So I have to do corrections in stages. And the first stage is make dark marks, dark, transparent, of course, transparent. That's typical, but very important in this case. The corrections need to be in transparent, dark paint. And of course, once again, even though I'm making corrections, it's important that the marks be attractive marks. So I can't, you know, I'm not going to go like this, you know, that kind of stuff. No, they need to be, need to be pleasant marks. Now here's, I debated for a while whether to even make this correction because I'm not sure that our eye can see this, this error, but I decided to do it. So there you go. There's the new uh, roof line. Now, the easiest thing 
and I'll probably do this because I don't, I don't think I have time to finish this today, which is to my advantage. So I'm going to do the dark stuff today, let it dry. And tomorrow when I come back, all of these dark lines that I'm making right now will be dry and I'll be able to do light colored paint on top of this. And if I do the light mark, the light paint the right way, it should, <laughs> do you hear that slight hesitation in my voice? It should come out all right. So it's a two-step process. First, the dark lines, then the light line. Now, one of the nice, good things about using these pencils is, of course, they're an oil-based pencil. So as soon as I come in here and do a dark line, essentially drawing, redrawing what was pencil, I, I, I eliminate the excessive pencil marks on the paintings. So now I've turned it into, now I've turned these marks into paint marks, brush marks, if you catch my drift here. So in other words, the pencils are an easy thing to cover up if you're covering um, with oil paint. Easy fix. Oh, this is going to be such a lovely painting. <laughs> I honestly, uh, I've been very busy, which is a good thing. I've been very busy the last couple of weeks and have not had time to get back to this painful painting. <laughs> so it's been staring at me, making me grumpy, <laughs> reminding me of my um, mortality <laughs> for weeks. So I'm really going to be glad to get this thing fixed and get it out of here. I do think, by the way, I'm, I think it's got the potential for being a, a nice painting. Um, as soon as I get the errors fixed, I would, there were some aspects of this, this painting that I was quite happy with. <laughs> uh, no doubt that short-lived pleasure is part of what made me blind to my foolish errors. Anyway, and you do, you know, this, this, is that's basically all, all I wanted to show you today. Uh, Maybe tomorrow I'll do part two. Of course, while I've got dark paint on my brush, I might as well take advantage and add a little bit more texture and interest to these trees. I had such a good time doing these trees out there. I had a good time doing the, all the kids down there, but I just, I need to get the perspective corrected, of course. There are a lot of mistakes you can get away with in painting. Like you can move things, like this tree is moved over, you know, quote unquote mistake. There are a number of architectural details that you don't have to have exactly correct. But the one thing you have to get correct, of course, is perspective. So that's what I'm doing. So, and again, basically two-step process. I mean, it could be three-step process. I could I could do this and then come back and do glazes and then do more, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? I could, I could stretch it out, but that's not what I want to do. I want to get it done as quickly as possible. And the shortest possible way to get to these, make these corrections is by doing, first of all, dark details and then coming back and light details. It's mostly the light details that will actually, you know, carry the corrections. It, no, that's not, that will hide the corrections. That's what I mean to say. I'm making the corrections with the dark paint, with the, with the dark lines right now, but they, they, they're kind of screaming out loud. Uh, but when I come back tomorrow and uh, with the light paint, hopefully that will disguise all of these corrective marks. Okay, that's all I really, really need to show you. <laughs> that's good enough. This is enough humiliation. <laughs> Thank you to John, my friend up in Norfolk, who said, uh, <laughs> that was funny. I was in Norfolk last week, and John's one of the people that follows me occasionally on my, and I, and I said, yeah, the other day I was doing this painting. I got the perspective all out of whack, and he said, you mean that school? <laughs> There we were, standing like old buddies on the beach. And he said, you mean that school? <laughs> John, I hope you hear this, man. I love you.
That was classic. That was just classic. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm being all humble. Yeah, I really screwed up. He helped me be even more humble. You mean that school? <laughs> yeah, John. This school. Okay, good enough. Thanks for watching, guys.